Welcome. My name is George Pearson and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos on my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques that you'll find in different software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video though is different. This is one in a series of longer project demonstrations that I'm doing that show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish such as changing this background or adding in these swirls or changing hair color. All the images I use in these are public domain and you'll find a link to the pictures in the description if you want to work along and follow my demonstrations. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the project. In this Photoshop project we're going to be adding in these bright swirls around a figure. Now it's a straightforward process and it requires creating a path, putting a stroke onto the path, and a glow onto that as well. Pretty easy to do though. Let me just demonstrate how this is done so you can see this. We'll go over here to our actual image and the first thing you need to do is to select your color. So I'll just choose a color in here. There we go. Let's have a color. Let's put this on a new layer just like that. And then using the pen tool I'm going to click on a couple spots here and just give us a straight line on that pen tool like that. Now when you have a path made with the pen tool, you can then take your direct select tool, right click on the path, and you can then stroke that path, apply a stroke onto that path. You can choose all kinds of tools for this. We'll be using the brush tool. Now what this does, I'm going to cancel that for one second. What this does is it takes the last brush or the current brush setting. So we have our color down here. And right now this is set at 8 pixels with a hardness of 0, so it's a soft brush. It then applies that onto your path. So it's right click, stroke. Make sure you have simulate pressure on here. This will let it fade out at the ends. Choose OK. And it applies that stroke onto that line. Now it's a bit thin as you can see here, so maybe we want a little bit thicker paintbrush. Let's just undo that. Let's go to our brush. I'm going to bring the size up here. We'll try to at just about 28 see what happens. It may take a couple of tries to get just the right size. Okay, stroke path, same thing. There we go. We can go a little bit thicker still, but it gives you that nice line. Now if you right click again, you can delete the path and it just leaves the stroke on there. So. That's the basic concept. I think I'm going to go a little bit thicker than this. That's at 28. We'll go a little larger than that for this, this effect near maybe about uh, 35 or 40. Okay, I'm going to back up a couple of steps. Let's just get rid of that. Now we know the basic approach. Let's go back to our tool. And the next thing you want to do is you want to click a starting position someplace. So I'll click right back there. And then click over here, but click and pull. When you pull, it gives you a curve as you can see there. I can then come over here and click and pull and I get another curve. Let's go over here and I'll click and pull. So I'm making a series of curves using this pen tool. Just a little pull. Of course you can, you, know, you can move that anywhere you want to, but if you just pull it straight down just a little bit, it gives you a nice little curve on there. The further apart these ends are, the wider your curve is going to be. Let's just bring it down in tight here around the feet, and then we'll finish it off right there. Now, of course, since this is a path, I can come in and adjust that. Just take the direct select tool, and you can then adjust the position of all your curves and get them just the way that you want them. You also can adjust the width of the curve in here by pulling these handles out. But I think we're pretty good. It's just really a matter of thinking this through. So this is going to be, I'll do this in front of, and this will be behind. Then that's in front, that's fine, that's behind, then that's in front again. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit. And let's pull that over a little bit. It shows a bit better. There it goes. That's, this will be in front, and then we go in behind there. That's okay. Then back around to front and behind and front and behind so I'll a little bit higher okay so there's our path and we're going to be 
making our swirls or our colors on this path. We have our colors already set and we'll right click. Actually I'm going to back up just for one second here. Let's go back to our brush and let's make this brush size larger. We already talked about that but I just haven't done it so let's make sure if we do that we'll do 40 pixels. Now the size of the brush is going to depend upon the dimensions of your picture. The bigger picture the thicker brush you need. The smaller the picture the smaller the brush size. Okay back to our tool. Right click on the path. Stroke the path. Simulate pressure. We're using the brush. Choose OK. And there we go. Kind of fades out on the ends. That's perfect. Nice and thick in the middle. I like that. It's on its own layer. We need that in just a second. Now we can at this point get rid of the path. So right click and delete path and there it goes. So that looks good. Now let's go over here and we're going to apply a layer effect on this. Click on the FX. That brings that the layer styles up. We want outer glow. There it is. Let's click on outer glow and then we can adjust the size of that outer glow. You know, a little more spready, that kind of strange look. Or if you just for the size, you get a nice little glow happening on that. You can go precise or you can go softer. I kind of like softer in here. We also can change the contour style. I want to try different contour styles to see what the effect is. So you can get some real wacky effects in here from these different contours. I kind of like that one actually. That has a nice, a nice look to it. That's a half round look. Okay, so there's our contour. Now if you don't like that color, this is the default color, just click on that little color spot there and then choose a new color. So here we go. I'll just come into these pinks to find one that actually matches. That's pretty good. We're going to do a different color completely if you want to. Or the original yellows. I think that looks pretty good. I like that. Choose OK and OK. OK, so far so good. Now at this point you can either do this the fast easy way or the way it takes a little bit longer to do. The easy way is just to take the eraser tool and erase the parts that are overlapping your figure. Let me demonstrate that. I'll make a copy of this. There we go. And let's hide that one. I'm going to hide these FX. I'll make a copy of the backgrounds. We'll be, be using that in just a second. Let me put that. Actually, I think we're okay there. We'll put that right there. So the easy way is to come in with the eraser tool and erase the parts that you don't want. So here's our eraser. There we go. Let's check the size. I want a hard on this, hard eraser. That's pretty good size in here for that. Now just think of where you want this to go. So this is going to be in front and then I want it going behind right there. So I'm just going to come in and I'll find my edges and I'll click on those and then erase out the center section. So that comes in front and then it goes behind right here. So I'll find my edge. Just click into that edge to erase that out. And then I'll leave a little bit showing right down in there. You might want to allow a little bit of overlap. Gives you that glowing effect. And then right down there. It's coming out in front. And then it goes in behind down here. And again, just come in and erase the part that you don't want. I'm going to back up a little bit here. That's not quite as clean as I like. Because we're right on the edge. Let's take a little more careful approach. I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush size here on this. So right about there. I'm just carefully following the edge of her sleeve. And leaving a little glow is okay. I wouldn't just touch too far. Let me back up a bit there. And then we'll erase 
that's pretty good and we'll come in right there Leave a little overlap so some glow in there that's fine and then right down here and erase out this stuff so it's in behind right there in front of goes in behind the boots right here so let's erase that again you can allowing a little bit of a bleed over is okay looks like it's glowing more that way there we go that's in front and then this is going to be in behind right down there notice how it fades out that is because we allowed that brush pressure when we applied that stroke okay let's back out yeah, let's just do it the fast way here fit on screen there we go so color swirls happening around this figure looks pretty good that's one approach just going back in and erasing as you can see it's real fast to do the other way would be to use this image up here let me just change it up I'll put this down below there we go you can hide those let's show this one I'll bring this on top but this is our copies in here now other way is to use this and then carefully create a selection around this to overlap and put in front of this section and then erase the parts of the picture that you don't want we're kind of doing it the opposite direction I'll just show you part of that technique I'll use a magic wand here and let's just grab some of this this gets me you know all of that dress in there that's the main thing I want right now so I'm going to do an edit copy let's do a layer actually layer new layer via copy there we go there's the new layer put that in front you can see now it's kind of blocking the image and then all I need to do is erase out the part of this layer that is blocking the parts of the swirl that I want to keep so that's in front that's behind that's in front that's good this should be in behind so I probably need to erase the stroke back in that area or just fill that in so we'll do that first just a little erase right in there there we go make our brush size a bit larger okay so that's in behind this is in front so this time I'm going to actually just undo eraser there we go back up to this layer and I'm going to erase the dress a little too far there So we're erasing that dress that's in front of the stroke to reveal the stroke. And it goes in behind, that's fine, comes in front right down here, so I'll just erase that area. This is in behind, so I'd want to, you know, do the same thing down here. And then just you know do this kind of copying out parts of your image putting those in front and then erasing the image so you have those two options first option is to do what I like to do what I find easiest and that's just to erase where you don't want the glow showing sitting in front and erase the glow other way is the opposite of that and that is to copy out the picture you know a careful selection of the picture and make a copy of that section and then erase that picture align the glow to show through you may even want to do a combination of the two techniques it depends upon how you want to approach that but either one works okay let's go back to our original so there we go that's how to put in these colored swirls onto a picture I had just a few questions that have been asked about this particular technique let me see if we can answer some of those First off, if you have your path in here, I'll just do a fast path. Just like that. So if you have your path and you then try to select your path, right click on that and you're not getting anything, you're probably on the wrong tool. You're probably using the select tool up here, the move tool. 
Let's go back over here to our pen tool. And now if I right click on the path, I can stroke that path right here because I'm on the pen tool. Or if I'm on the direct selection tool, right click, I can stroke the path here. Or also if I'm on the path selection tool, I can stroke that path again as well. Now one more thing, the path is going to be on a particular layer. So I'm on a different layer. So see how I'm up here on layer 2. Notice that it's grayed out. So the path is dependent upon the layer that you're on as well. So make sure that you're on the layer that you drew the path on. Don't change layers. You can also find your path over here under paths. There's the work path right there. Okay, so make sure you're on the right tool and that you're on the right layer to be able to select that path and just right click on the path and you can then stroke that path. Next thing is the simulate pressure right down here. If you stroke the path and you're not getting that fade out effect then possibly you have jitter on the brush that you're using. Maybe you're not using a standard brush. I just used a, a real basic brush for this. You can check that by going over to your brush. So you're on your brush. Make sure that your brush is selected. I've just used just a, a standard brush up here with a and change the size on that. Then let's go up to window and bring up the brush panel in here. Look at your shape dynamics and make sure that the size jitter is down to zero on that. You want to have that down. Then you have your minimum diameter as well. Make sure that's set at around 20%. That should be fine. Everything else should be down at the bottom end and you should be okay. If these get up too high it'll begin to fill the whole path and you won't be able to see that fading out. But that shouldn't be a problem if you select one of your default brushes in here. You're not using a, a custom brush. Okay, so pretty straightforward as I can say on that. Now on doing this particular bit here, I'm using just the standard a standard wheel mouse on this. I'm not using a stylus or anything, so it's pretty straightforward to do this kind of curve. And as you saw before, we can adjust the smoothness of this curve in the position just by using the direct select tool. And you can then move things around on that. But notice also, after I have stroked that path, that stroke is just sitting there. The stroke is not moving around and following that path. So make sure that you have the path right where you want it before you apply that stroke. Okay, so there we go. That is how to create this kind of swirling effect. Let me just back up out of this stuff here. Let's just use my undo keys here. Back out of that and bring our strokes back up. So there we go. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.